Welcome to the heart of a Viking. This channel offers elementary art lessons taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape and Lopen School District in Delaware. I look forward to virtually creating with you. There are new lessons posted weekly. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss a single one. So go grab your art supplies and your thinking caps and let's begin. Fourth graders, I'm excited to share this piece of artwork with you. This is called The Island on Le Grand Jatte by Georges Seurat. And I have linked in your Clever account a video called uh, Matisse with Maddie and Dada, um, where Maddie and Dada are cartoon characters that go back in time and visit with Georges Seurat himself while he is painting this painting. And hopefully you'll pick up some really cool tips like in this painting there are animals like dogs and monkeys that's right bottom right corner lady has a leash with a monkey on the end also you'll notice that the styles of the clothing is really different from the styles we wear and I really hope you noticed this entire painting is painted with dots not regular brush strokes like we often use, but dots. And that is really what makes this special. So you and I today are going to make pretty much the same painting. We're going to minimize it a little bit. We're going to take out all the people and we're going to only make a few of the trees, not as many as there are, because painting with dots is extremely time consuming. So you and I today are going to begin um, with drawing out our island on the Grand Jolt, and then we'll begin painting in the blue spaces. So grab your art supplies and meet me on over to begin our piece of art. All right, so step one, we're going to begin drawing the horizon line. This is the landscape after all, and in a landscape, the first thing you wanna make is the horizon line. So a line straight across to divide the sky from the ground is exactly where we should start. Perfect. Next, I'm going to draw another line that also separates two things. This line is going to separate the land from the water. So I'm going to make a line right about here at the bottom, about four fingers over from the left, and it curves around until it comes up just below the horizon line. That's all water on the left side of that line, and then it's all land on the right side of the line. So on the side with the land, we're going to add a tree, right about where my hand is sitting. You can see on my finished one here where the tree is going to go. I know there were a lot more trees in the island of the Grand Jacques by Georges Seurat, but you and I are gonna make just one to practice with today. You can always make a second painting on your own where you add lots more of the trees if you'd like. So I'm making my tree a little bit thinner at the bottom, a little wider, wider at the top. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I really want the top to separate into two branches. Um, before I get to that though, I'm gonna erase the part of the horizon line and the land line that are going through the tree. The reason I do this is because the tree is in the front and the lines are in the back. Okay, so now back to the top of the tree. So when I get to the top of the tree, I'm basically going to just put a letter V between those two lines to separate it into two branches. So here I go, letter V, down and back up. Now I have two branches at the top of my tree and then a nice strong trunk holding it up. So George Seurat's trees have kind of a poofy, cloud-like uh, leafy portion area at the top. So we'll just imitate that same style. So from the trunk of the tree, just above the horizon line there, I'm just making kind of a curved line that goes up and then the other side's gonna go off the edge of the paper. Perfect, that one's all done. So now we'll add a couple of trees that are way back in the distance. So these are going to be a lot smaller and they'll be on the other side of the water. So from the horizon line kind of reaching up, the same style of tree, just the trunk with the kind of cloud-like leafy part. You can honestly make as many as you want, three, four, five, 25, whatever you think is best. Um, I'll go with four this time. On my original one, I had three. So just whatever you think fits and looks good over there. Make sure you make them small because they're far away. Now, I'm not sure if you could tell, but there is some land that was right under those trees that's just on the left side of the water here. So I'm going to add a second line that kind of follows the horizon line, kind of mimics the same style. And I'll just have it sort of fade away once I get towards the tree and it's not going to continue on the other side of the tree. So just to the tree and stop. Um, there's just a little bit of extra land there and that's what the, 
the trees are growing from. Perfect. So now we paint. So we need a type of a Q-tip. The kind I have is actually for creating art, but you can use a Q-tip from your bathroom too. And I have a little bit of blue paint here in a cup. You don't need a whole lot of paint, just a little squeeze of paint. I'm using tempera because that's what I have here at school. Acrylic paint will work just as well, um, but the liquidy kind of paint like this is better. Watercolor paints probably won't work quite as well. All right, so I'm just dipping the top tip of my Q-tip in my paint, and I'm seriously making a million little dots right next to each other, on top of each other, beside each other, as many dots as you can and whatever you need to fill in this space. I'm working right now on the water, so the water's going to start out as blue, and I'm starting on the left side of the water because I'm right-handed. I really have both hands resting on the table right now as I'm working on my piece of artwork. My left hand is holding the paper and my right hand, the bottom of my pinky, is kind of sitting on the paper. So if I had started on the right side, my hand would be sitting in wet paint. So since I'm right-handed, I start on the left side. If you're left-handed, you guessed it, you should start on the right side and work your way across so that your hand is always out of the paint. All right, let's finish up the water. Quick little artist tip. See how my Q-tip is getting flat on the end because I keep dabbing with it? On my newspaper that I have protecting the area, if I roll and twist the Q-tip on the newspaper, it will push the cotton back to the top. I wasn't like rubbing my Q-tip on the newspaper, I was just rolling it. That's what helps it to get back to a point and you can do that as often as you need to. Alright, so you might have guessed that we're also going to be using the blue for the sky. Now for the sky, we want to make it a little different. Let's make it dark, so lots of dots at the very top edge, but then as you work down closer to the horizon line, let's use fewer dots. That will give an appearance from far away that it is lighter at the horizon line because the whiteness of the paper will visually mix with the blue of the paint and make a lighter looking horizon line. And that, my dear friends, is exactly what happens in real life. In real life, the sky is bluer above your head and lighter as you go down towards the horizon line. Okay, so let's try that for the sky. Lots of dots near the top and fewer dots as you come down. All right, my friends, so that's the end for today. Today we're going to clean up, just do the blue for today, and when we return next week, we'll be adding in the green, some brown, we'll go back to the blue, and then we'll also add in some yellow. So I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you back here next time to finish up our George Surratt Island on the Grand Jante paintings here at the Heart of a Viking.